Hello, it's me. It's Mr. Yattics, and I'm back again. And I realise I've been away for quite a long time, um, which I apologise for. Um, but in my defence, I was uh, rescuing prisoners of war from Ecuador. So, you know, it's got to be done. Anyway, I'm back now to talk to you about Wing Chun. And today I want to talk to you about um, one of the biggest criticisms that Wing Chun and traditional martial arts have uh, or get. Which is that they're not live, they're not um, they're not realistic, they're not useful um, for uh, for the people who train it, and it's a waste of time to train traditional martial arts because they just don't work in a real life situation against somebody who wants to actually kill you. Okay, now <clears throat> this is largely a accurate criticism. I'm going to say that as a Wing Chun Sifu of nearly twenty years, it's accurate criticism that a vast majority of traditional martial artists can't fight for shit okay and this is largely because in the west the training of traditional martial arts is uh, very much a middle class hobby okay people don't do it for a living they don't do it to keep themselves alive they do it because it's it's a hobby for them to do uh, much the same way that you would go and learn needlecraft or salsa dancing martial arts okay and obviously there's much more to martial arts uh, than other particular pursuits but as this isn't necessarily bad things it's very very important that people in the west kevin from accounts can go and learn traditional martial arts especially chinese martial arts for eastern martial arts where uh, we need to keep these things alive and it's very important that people have, people have access to them and are able to train them uh, to the to the utmost of their abilities the problem comes when you have um when it gets watered down over time Whereas, you know, you go back three or four or five generations, people are getting bloody noses, losing teeth, um, you know, they're, they're damaging their bodies through training extremely hard with each other to pressure test what they're learning against real incoming force. You go down these generations back to where we are today, and Kevin from accounts is punching a foot away from his opponent and having a chat about Coronation Street, and it's bullshit, okay? So what I'm talking about today is training with intention, and you can do this today when you go to your next class, your next Wing Chun class, your next whatever class you're doing, train with intention. And what I mean by this is if you're punching, punch. If you're being punched, absorb it, feel it. Okay. Now, one of the things that I see a lot, uh, especially with sort of younger students and people just starting off, because obviously you hope to get nice people to your classes. You don't want to get thugs in your classes or people who are there just to knock people about because that's no fun for anybody at all. And we are trying to run a business here and people come back week after week and have a good time. Good time. Very important. Okay. Um, is you, you want nice people to come to your classes, but get into the mindset, the mindset that you are training something that could potentially save your life if you commit to it. And that commitment is really, really important because if you're not prepared to commit to a block, if you're not prepared to commit to an attack, then you might as well not do it and you might as well hand over your wallet and lie on the floor because it's exactly the same sort of thing. And let me tell you something, and you're not going to want to hear this, there are some people who will never have that intention, that switch in their personality to hurt somebody else, potentially very badly. Because in Wing Chun, don't forget, we train over and over again to strike for eyes, windpipes, groin, we're, we're, we're overextending limbs, we're kicking through knee joints. Now, all well and good in, in the Kwu, we are giving somebody a little tap, aha, I got you, see, that would have worked because I got you there, didn't I? Got you there, touched you, I touched you with it, see, touched you. How do you translate that to aggression? Bam, straight through, snap. Screams of pain, blood everywhere, piss of vomit all over the place. How do you get from there to there? Yeah, Unless you're prepared to go and fight travellers in car parks at £50 a night, you're not going to get there. And I hope you don't get there. I hope, I, you know, it sounds weird, but I hope that everybody training Wing Chun never uses it. I hope that everybody who trains any martial art never uses it in that kind of, uh, that space, that place where it's you or them, where someone's going to the hospital Someone's going to die, you know, whatever it's going to be. Someone's going to be permanently disabled here. Uh, why would you want that? Unless you're a total psychopath, why would you want that to happen? Why would you, why would that be your aim? Why would your aim be to train something so that dot, 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 you could at some a specified point in the future hospitalise somebody? I don't understand that. That's not something that I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is you, in that fight or flight moment, being able to turn that switch on and apply what's in your muscle memory, yeah, where it lives, doesn't live here. If you train long enough, 
Your Wing Chun lives here, it lives here, it lives here, yeah? It lives in your joints, in your muscles, in your tendons, in all the places where you've drilled and you've drilled. And this is why we repeat. Repetition, very important, because that repetition is drilling it into your muscles, not into your mind, because when it comes to the fight or flight point, the last thing you want to be using is your mind, because your adrenaline is going to be dumping like a motherfucker, you are going to be shit scared, you will want to, you know, collapse on the floor, but that fight or flight moment, can you throw that bong up fast enough? And from that, can you counter? Can you drive that fax out in with all of your might into that other person's windpipe? Do you feel it crush? under your hand as it goes through. Hmm? Could you could you live with it afterwards? You know, you might win the fight, you might run off, you might keep your wallet and your phone, but uh, you know, could you live with, with the aftermath of that? You know, that's before you can get into the legal side of things and the police getting involved and all the rest of it. It's a scary life out there, man. It's really scary. So getting back to my original point, if you train with intention, so you train at full speed, yeah, pad up if you need to. I'm not a big fan of people training in pads all the time because everything just gets sloppy as fuck. Trust me. Look, you know, you, you pad up with your mate and video it. Your first few will be good Wing Chun. After about five, six minutes, it'll turn into a boxing match and it'll turn into a grappling match. And all your technique will go out the window. So what are you learning? Nothing. Okay. But by all means, pad up on occasion. Feel the strike going in. Yeah. Feel the application of the energy as well as receiving the energy. Yeah. And if you're drilling something, touch each other. Boom, boom, boom. You don't have to be knocking each other on the chair all the time. Go for the solar plexus. Boom, 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 boom. Bop. Yeah? Because you need to know if you're in range. You need to know how much of the range you've got left. So train with intention. All The best students I work with, ironically, are some of the female students. Um, because they just don't give a fuck. And they go at each other. And it's brilliant. Because it's still controlled. Because technique comes first. Yeah, get your technique, you hone the technique, keep the control, increase the speed, increase the ferocity, yeah, up to that point where you can't go any further without seriously hurting somebody, okay? That will help to condition you for things coming at you very, very quickly. Uh, because, you know, in real life, you don't have, whoa, 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 I wasn't ready. You can't, you don't get any of that shit. You get one chance. Yeah, and you've got to respond. And whether that response is perfectly correct or not, it should still work if you've trained it hard enough, which is where the old repetition comes in, okay? So I'll wrap it up there. If you're training, when you go back to class tomorrow, next week, train with intention. If the person you're training with doesn't like it, maybe they should be trained with intention as well, yeah? And if your Sifu says what you're doing, you're saying, train with intention, Sifu, I'm testing this stuff out. And he or she should be able to back you up on that and sort of say, okay, well, you know, this is where we're going to go with this, okay? Because playing patty cake with people and talking about Coronation Street is fun, I guess, but you're paying X pounds a lesson to learn how to defend yourself. Can you defend yourself? That's your question. It's been fun talking to you. I'll see you again soon. Uh, be good to each other and be cool. <laughs>